hello students so far we have talked about uh, various layouts linear layout grid layout table layout and constraint layout today we'll be talking more about how we can interact with those layouts gui elements maybe the input field or maybe the button how we can interact with those gui elements that we have so far less learned <coughs> so let's start so the first thing is that we have gui design then we also have the app navigation app navigation is more like we have multiple activities in our projects in our mobile application and then how we can navigate between different uh, activities different user interfaces we also have a user experience user interaction design of the interruptions obvious and quick to understand so the thing is that we need to keep our design and the navigation and the interaction and so simple that it is very much understood when the user look at your screen then it know very well that if he press on that particular button what it will do if we interact with that particular specific element then how it will react so that should be simple and quite simple and straightforward <clears throat> of course well we need to may, uh, prepare for the major platforms get the personal without invading the user privacy we need if we want to get some information out of the user then we should not like asking okay what is your first name what is your last name what is your email address what is your uh, house address what is your mobile number and so on so these are something like which are more kind of a things that the users are a bit reluctant to uh, share but if you are just asking you what is your nickname then he will be more willing to give that thing or maybe you can ask him what is your age your age group less than 10 less than 20 less than 30 above 30 and so on so that will be simple questions then the user will be more uh, willing to answer as compared to giving away the private information so we need to design that particular interaction or the information sharing in such a way that we are not invading the user privacy but still we are getting some personal information or we are uh, personalizing that particular application for our user <coughs> these are some user guidelines and these are not at all the final things okay so these are just guidelines for example here if you look at that so we are saying that if we have those sharp edges those corners they are not that very much we also have these lines over there on the other hand if we are trying to use it as a more like an edge part which is rounded corners and so on so it is much more acceptable it is much more uh, visually um, what you can say that uh, aesthetic and so this is a these are just a few recommendations these are not the final words on it this again when we are talking about the mobile application then we should to think about that mobile has a limited space and in which we need to uh, convey our messages we need we to convey our meaning and we need to design our user interface on the other hand the desktop is a different uh, screen size is a different requirement it has a click it has a mouse input and so on but here we have only one fingers that we are going to use for the input and interacting with the application so we need to keep that particular specific fact that we are designing something for the desktop or we are designing that something for the mobile so we need to consider that particular fact that we are designing for the mobile and accordingly we need to design <coughs> similarly if uh, if we look at that particular specific uh, input field yeah it's so that it's you have a drop down menu you can select some uh, uh, city we also have address but if you something have something like okay we need we can add it that particular specific city we can add that specific address and then start parking so I mean these are some guidelines and recommendations for designing your application user interface so that will help you to auto detect the thing for example when you're pressing l and 
then automatically it will show you learn them about some other uh, possible uh, city names that are possible with that particular l o n okay so auto detecting the things and then helping out the user to fill those information quickly similarly if there is some error like we are unable to connect with the internet and so you have to you can show maybe a dialog box or maybe show this is more like a, a snack bar which is coming from the bottom of the screen going up and then stay for some time and then disappear again these are some recommendations for a good user experience design <clears throat> so so far we have learned about the linear layout table layout constraint layout grid layout and then definitely uh, after this uh, event programming we will be talking about in the next week the card layout and the recycle view. but so far we have studied till now now we need to learn that all these layout that have been designing that how we can interact with the user how the user can do something maybe he tap with his finger on some button and then how we can get that particular specific application to respond to that tap and do or perform some specific action which the user want to do from our application so gui design is done or but you can say that we have understand we have some experience with it now we need to understand about the user interaction before we can uh, jump to the user action uh, these are the application components and so far we have discussed only the activities so we have activities services content providers and the broadcast receivers but till now we are only covering the act covered the activities so if we look at our mobile application the default activity the one activity which is by default added in our mobile project these are the main activity and then of course the android manifest file which is for the <coughs> more like a setting file so we have in the main activity we have two files one is the main activity dot java which is representing the code file and the other one is the activity underscore main dot xml that is representing the layout design file so activity represent one screen with the gui file as well as the programming code and that particular activity should be the child activity of our class child child of an activity activity is a class which is defined in the android apis so this is our gui design if i look at that for example uh, we have a constraint layout in the constraint layout we have a text view of course we have apply all those constraints to make sure that it is at the top of the uh, screen and then it's center line horizontally we also have a view which is representing that particular specific line under underneath that title uh, text view then we have a button then we have a text view which is representing that particular name then we have an edit text which is representing that input field where the user can en enter his name and then at the end we also have another button which is let us play so this is a simple user interface that we have designed here constraint layout inside we have a text view view button and text view edit view and this button as well so this is representing the activity underscore main.xml file don't worry about it i will upload that particular specific project which i am showing you right now here in the code files of the uh, application so on Moodle you can find all those in that particular project and you can look at all the details and how i have set the constraint and so on the other file is the main activity dot java class java file if we look at that we have main activity that is a class which extends which is it means that this particular specific main activity is the child class of the app compact activity but what i said i said that if we want to define an activity that should be child class of activity class but here it is not it is not like app compact but actually it is so here we have at the bottom uh, we have the app compact activity uh, compact activity which is the subclass of the fragment activity which is subclass of the component activity and eventually it is the subclass of the activity so app compact activity is a, is a child class of activity and because our main activity is the child of this one so eventually our main activity is the child class of the activity okay so maybe we are using a different class which has some other functionalities 
uh, as compared to the very base class or the very net, very simple activity class but still our activity main activity is actually the child class of the activity and then inside that particular child uh, main activity class we have an own create method we have discussed this in the class that it is more like a constructor of a class so here we can say that it is a constructor of the activity <clears throat> so whenever you want to show that user interface the layout that you have designed then it will call that particular specific uh, act, uh, on create class and when this particular specific main activity is being created in the memory it will create that on create activity on create method and when it will create on create method actually this particular specific line actually create all the uh, if we if we look back into our activity uh, this one so we have a constraint layout we have a text view we have a view all these are representing the classes inside our java apis or the android apis okay so so when we are actually executing this particular line what happen it will create all those objects constraint layout text view view button button text edit text and text view all those objects class objects inside our ram and once they are created inside the ram then they are being displayed on the screen of your mobile so inside our inside our ram we have a constraint layout instance or the object of that particular constraint layout class we also have uh, the for this particular number like title uh, text we have a text view object in our ram for this particular line we have a view object in our class in our ram we for this particular these two buttons we also have the button objects in our in our and then for, similarly for name and the input field we all these are represented as the objects or the instance of these classes inside of ram they present over there without creating those instances without creating those objects we cannot see them on the screen so whenever we are running that particular specific line set content view r dot layout activity underscore main so activity underscore main is the name of the class its name of the file example file in which we have laid down all those uh, details about all those properties of the ui component and so on so it what it will do it will take that particular activity underscore main dot example file and convert or create all the instances of all the objects which we have defined in that particular layout file and once they have been created in the ram then they are being visible to us <clears throat> so make sure that whenever we are creating showing a screen then all these objects that we see on the screen they are actually present inside our ram inside our memory so now we have different type of interactions we can tap we can long press like we press the finger and hold for some time that's a long press we can pinch we can swipe we can scroll rotate and so on so there are different type of interactions which are present inside the android so based on the interaction <coughs> or events we do some work <coughs> sorry for example we tap on some button it will show some a message to the user or maybe it will do some calculations or maybe it connect to the internet so we can do whatever we want and similarly if we have a long press then again in response of that particular specific long press we want that particular specific application to do some action or do some, perform some specific task for us so even programming is more like invoking a method in response of the interaction when the user makes some interaction with the application we are we have written a function or a method in our java code file and that code or the method will be executed in response to that particular specific event and that is called event programming so user gestures is also a interaction we are pressing long press pinch swipe swipe left swipe right swipe up swipe down 
Wi-Fi connected or not connected, aeroplane mode is on and off, battery is less than 10%, download is completed. So we have different types of events, user events, which involve the users, which are instantiated, which are activated, which are started by the user. And we also have some events which are started by the system itself. Battery is less than 10%, battery is less than 20%. These are these events which has been generated by the system itself, Android system, Android operating system. So we have user events as well as the system events and our application can uh, respond to those events provided that we are capturing those events we are receiving we are detecting those events and then accordingly we can execute a specific method or we a, a specific code in response to that particular specific event <coughs> so assigning a method on the click event of a widget that we can do how that is the question okay so let us in the next few slides i will tell you how we can actually assign a method to the click event of a specific view or the gui component of the widget so if we look at our uh, user interaction user interface this particular user interface is contained inside the constraint layout so first of all what we want so when we tab on the screen we, we can show a message we can change the color we can also have a welcome button when we show, when click on the welcome button that we want to show a snack bar over there what is a snack bar we will, i will show you a little bit later uh, we can also see that if we press on that particular title that's a number game title of that particular game if we long press that particular specific uh, text then it show me the rules of the game how it will show i will show you in a in a shortly uh, tap on the play button when you tap on the play button then we start the game so today in this particular specific lecture we will be talking about these first three interactions okay so what are those first of all we have a constraint layout so we are assigning an id to that particular specific constraint layout what do you mean by id id is something like which we can say that the name for example i am in the class with you and you know my name or boss Malik and then say hi boss then I know that you are talking to me and then I can respond yes maybe Shane or maybe uh, what do you say uh, Jetson uh, Tipona who have different students for here so I can respond to them okay yes Jetson or maybe yes Tipona or Jack I can respond why because i have a name and then you're calling by my name so i am also an object if we look at in the object oriented paradigm i am a human object and i have a name a boss when you call the name a boss then i will respond to that so the same thing that we are doing here as you know that when we run that particular set content view method inside the on create this particular specific constraint layout object is being created but we have not assigned a name so here when we are assigning the id actually we are assigning a specific name to that particular constraint layout object and once we have assigned that particular specific name then we can access that particular specific object inside our java code okay so the second thing that we are doing here it is an on click and remember that if we are just setting this particular one object here that this on click event and you don't want to access that particular object anywhere else except that on click you don't need to assign an id it is not necessary that you provide that id over there only for the on click you can just set the property on click and then you give the name of the method that is the name of the method that will be executed from your java code file how I mean when you give that particular on click property and give that particular name that particular specific name will be read underlined okay so what you can do you can click anywhere inside that name anywhere okay and then you say alt enter when you press alt enter it will show you this particular specific uh, dialog box and here you say that we are saying that we want to create that particular specific method which take a view as an input inside our main activity class so when you select that particular option press enter when you press enter actually it will create that particular specific method inside our 
main activity class so remember so we have that on create method and this particular specific method create all these objects which are the ui components and now it has added at this particular specific method automatically inside our main activity class now we can change that particular we can write bit the code between these two brackets and those actions or the those code lines will be executed whenever you are clicking on that particular specific layout anywhere in the layout maybe here maybe here maybe here here inside that particular layout except these on buttons and except this on uh, the uh, input field or the button so anywhere else if you click on that it will execute that particular specific method so what we want to do here so that name exactly the same as you have mentioned in that on click property it doesn't it is a public it does not return anything huh? it, it is the the return type is void and it receive a view as an input so that view is actually representing the view itself on which you have the user has taken the interaction but here we are talking about the constraint layout it means that view will be representing the constraint layout and remember that whether it is a constraint layout whether it is a button whether it's the edit text whether it's a text view whether it is a view they are all the child of the view so that is the super class or the parent class of all our gui components so we can catch it or we can cast it into the and so that is represented that view will be representing the constraint layout itself so one more thing that we have done here we have a boolean we have uh, created a boolean variable okay that is on change color changed what we want to do whenever we are clicking on that particular anywhere in that particular constraint layout it will change that particular background color from white to some other color as well as it will show me a toast message okay so that is what we want to do so we are trying to prepare our application to prepare our code for that particular color change if it is changed it will if it is changed then it will not change that color or if it is already changed it will turn back into the white okay so here we are inside our layout clicked even what we are saying we have a toast don't make text we are providing the context this we are providing the message that we want to show in that particular toast and then how long we want to show that because this message will appear for some time and then it will disappear so how long you want to long underscore short or length underscore short or length underscore long so depending on that you want to show it up for a longer period of time and then disappear or you just it appear for some time and then disappear and then at the end we are saying that to show show this particular message and then this particular line is actually remember that we have assigned the id main activity top constraint layout so that is the name that we have provided to that particular constraint layout and now we are saying that we are creating a constraint layout variable and then we are saying that assign it to the constraint layout interface or the or instance of the object how find the view find that constraint layout object by its id and r dot id r is a class okay that is present in our um, project and id is a subclass in the r i will show you when we are talking i will give you the practical demonstration i will show you where that exactly so that is automatically assigned a specific value over there and then we are trying to access it to assign to connect the constraint layout object which is present in the memory with our java variable inside our java code so we are connecting this variable with the actual object of the constraint layout which is present inside our ram or the memory using the id that have we have assigned or using the id or the name that we have assigned to that particular specific layout inside our xml file so once we have done that now using that constraint layout we can set its properties for example here we are saying that if not color changed if it is false the color is not changed what it will do it will set the background color to this one if it is changed then it will set the background color to back to the white and every time we are pressing that particular constraint layout 
it is going to change that particular value from true to false or false to true every time it will shift it will uh, what you can say that switch the value from true to false false to true and so on. okay so this is how we have implemented a layout clicked event for i mean here we have changed the things okay and now look at that this is how it's doing this is actually that application is running so when we click on the constraint layout it is going to change the background color when we click again it is going to turning it back into the uh, white color if we're clicking on the uh, button or the input field or the button then it is not going to do as what we want to do okay because that is we are clicking on the constraint layout not the other end uh, elements which actually have some interaction with which the user can interact so we have implemented one part now we talk about that if we want to click on that particular welcome message button then i want to show a snack bar a snack bar is uh for that first of all we say on click like here I, I didn't say that you need to assign because we are only implementing the on click event we don't need to assign the id to this particular specific button so we only say on the on click property this is the method name of the method that we want to execute and as i told you that whenever you when you are writing it into the android studio that particular specific name will be red underlined so what you need to do you can click you can bring your cursor anywhere in between these two double quotes and press alt enter when you press alt enter it will ask you to create that method inside the main activity and you say yes you want to create it select that option and press enter so it will create that particular specific method inside our main activity and once it is done we can start coding that particular specific method for example this is the snack bar okay so it will show up in the bottom of the screen show a specific message and then after some time it will automatically disappear that is what we want to do but snack bar is something like toast that we have used on the click event of the constraint layout that particular specific class is already present inside the android api and it is already imported into our project but snack bar is something is coming from the material design uh, library and this library is not by default imported inside our project so what we need to do we need to add those dependence that particular specific dependency in our project and how we can do that if we look into our um, site project uh, view then uh, open that particular expand that particular gradle scripts and then you can double click on the gradle dot build at the app we have two gradle build one is the project one is the module or the app so look at the app one double click on that when you double click on that it will open that particular specific file and in that particular specific file we can add this specific line under the dependencies when you add that particular specific line here or you modify that particular specific gridle dot build file on the right top right corner you will see a message that sync it now so yes we need to sync it now and when you click on that sync it now make sure that your application make sure your computer is connected with the internet if it is not connected with the internet because what it will do we are saying dot material. so at is actually this particular specific library informations are coming from the internet if it is not connected with the internet that sync process is not going to be work successfully so make sure that when you are changing something <coughs> in your uh, gradle dot file adding some dependency make sure that you are connected with the internet once it is synced you don't need to be worried about the connection with the internet but at that specific time when you are syncing uh, those libraries then you have to be connected with the internet okay so if it is not connected then this particular specific process will not be successful and eventually whenever you are connected with the internet that particular specific process will be successful later but at that time no so this one point you need to keep in mind when you are changing the uh, dependencies inside your Gradle build file. Once we have impl uh, imported our snack bar library, then it is just like we make a toast. So we snack bar dot make. We are providing the view that we are receiving as an input. And then we are saying that welcome to the number game. That is a message that we want to show on that snack bar. 
and snack bar dot length again how long you want to show that particular specific snack bar long time or this small time and then you say that uh, dot show you can simply say dot show you don't need to say it's dot set action set action something then if you uh, click on something click on that snack bar then what you want to perform so if you want to perform something then you can give the again the method name here and it will execute that particular specific method when you are clicking on that snack bar but right now you can simply say that after this particular specific bracket you can put dot show so without dot set action that should be fine so it will show that particular specific uh, passage and after some time it will automatically disappear so that is our welcome message button interaction that we have just implemented so now we want to implement the long press long press mean that number game that title if we press for some time hold for a few seconds then it will show us the rules of the game so this is the interaction that we cannot set in the xml property we don't have our own long press property inside our xml file and then we can set the uh, method name over there so we can't do that so if we can't do that it means that we need to create a connection between the java variable and the actual object inside the ram so for that we need to assign an id okay and once that particular specific connection is built using that particular variable we can set its different type of interactions so the first thing is we need to create a clickable variable text view and then we need to connect it with the actual variable or actual class object or the instance of the text view inside our ram and how we can do that simply we can say that we find by view id so we assign an id to that particular specific text view in the xml file and using that particular name or the id we are assigning it to the variable or we are connecting that particular object with the variable inside our java code file so first of all in the xml file we need to assign an id to this particular specific text view once we have done that then we are creating a global variable here which is the text of the type text view and then the name of the variable and then we are connecting that particular variable using the id and the name or the name of the text view with the variable inside of a java code once we have done that then we can set its on long click event okay and how we can do that it's again very simple so we have say that the variable name dot set on click listener we can also say that dot set on click listener only without a long then it will be only a simple tab but now we say that on long click listener we say that new view dot on link click listener it will auto don't worry about that particular specific i mean how i would write all those things uh, the android studio is going to help you out when you say set on click on long it will automatically show you that on long click listener you in the drop down menu you can select that and then you press enter and automatically create the first part and go into that particular specific uh, what you can say that the parameter list and you say new on automatically it will show you on long click listener so when you press enter automatically it will create that on long click method over there okay so here we are just showing you that on the long press you want to show a specific so what you can say that a toast but that what we don't want to do okay so what we want to do we want to create a dialog box so what we are saying so we say alert dialog dot builder we are building a builder we are creating a builder of the alert dialog type builder and we say new alert dialog dot build dot builder and we are providing we uh, that the the context act main activity dot this because we are creating this in the main activity dot this because that will be the background and it will be show on the in front of that particular space will be main activity dot this and then we are saying that in that particular alert dialog what will be the title of that particular specific dialog what will be the message that we want to show here of course the user need to click on the button with a bigger number to gain five points if the user click on the wrong button then it will lose 
we will lose the five points and then we are assessing a neutral button what we want to show on that neutral button and what we want to uh, do when the user click on that particular specific uh, ok button so we here we are not doing anything much we just cancel that particular disappear that but i mean we want to uh, we want that this particular specific dialog box disappear automatically and once we have set all those property for that particular alert dialog then we say builder dot create dot show builder that is a builder object or that it will create this particular specific uh, dialog whose properties we have set what will be title what will be message and what will be the neutral button so it will create that particular dialog box and then it will show it so that is our what you can say that uh, the uh, Mm, okay so if i just show so it will show me something like this uh, this particular specific dialog box so let me show you that particular specific activ uh, activity i mean this is i mean this is running in the, the same um, game activity that main activity that i have just shown you here if i just long click here so you can see that it will show me that particular specific dialog box when i click ok it that will disappear if i click on the message button it will show me the snack bar um, and then uh, we also if we click on the constraint layout anywhere uh, maybe here on the name if i click on this one it is not going to work the reason is that we have implemented some interaction with that particular text view yeah if we click somewhere here somewhere here somewhere here somewhere here it is going to change every time the color of the background and it will show you that particular specific message if we click again it will change back to the white color and so on so that is our uh, the interaction that we have defined so far on the click even though the button show the snack bar on the long press of that particular specific title it will show me that dialogue which show the rule of the game and that is the what you can say that that is the end of our lecture so in the next lecture we will be talking about the multiple activities how we can have multiple activities i mean if you look at the current scenario so we are showing you a one welcome screen and then when you say let us play button click on that it will start a new activity where we are going to play that particular game itself so we will have multiple activities in the one project and how we can navigate from one activity to the other so that is the uh, thing that we'll be talking about in the next we will also talk about the input validation passing information from one activity to the other and then at the end we will also talk about the menu bar and its sections how we can implement the menu bar inside our mobile app and how we can perform some actions whenever we are selecting uh, those uh, menu bar options so here are some references for this particular specific lecture i hope you have enjoyed thank you bye